Perfect job defensively getting a starting call today. Down low to Leitner. Ball is tipped out of bounds. It'll come back in bounds to Notre Dame. And an Irish player is down. Looks like Elmer Bennett. Now it's Tim Singleton. Notre Dame's had its problems this year with Williams out with a bad heart. And Ellery academically out. Off the fingertips of Leitner. Tim Singleton might have taken a finger in the eye. So we're stopped early with Duke in the lead, 2 0. Here's a different angle of it. Greg Kubik trying to feel inside. No, it looks like the elbow caught him. And so it should be right below the eye. So Tim is up, a very important Irish player, a top defender. As you see, a senior from New Orleans. Uh, they can't go without Singleton. He's the coach on the court. He, his only problem is kind of soft from shooting, but he handles the ball and he runs the show. They move in with a French freshman, most likely Brooks Boyle. And Blue Devils putting on full court pressure as Bennett breaks it and strokes the shot. The rebound is taken by Damon Sweet. Phelps charged his guards yesterday. They, they've got to give them a lot of offense. They want him to drive on McCaffrey and Hurley. Don't pick up the dribble, take it through. There's the defense I told you about. It's going to be hard man to man. Trying to get a run on Notre Dame. Knock them out early. You try to do that when you're on the road. And when you're better. Leitner, a good defender. Duke's leading Steeler takes the ball away from Tower. Goes back out to Hurley, who sets the play. Duke runs a motion offense. A lot of freelancing in it. When the clock gets down, they'll run plays. But he gives his players, Krzyzewski does a lot of latitude. The offensive end. It is a very strictly structured defensive team with a tight man. This 2-3 zone that Notre Dame is playing is going to come back to haunt them. There's just too many shooters. Kubek can hit from three-point land. Hurley and obviously uh, McCaffrey. Here it goes up. McCaffrey fires and he's a little short in a three-point try. Rebound off the hands of a Notre Dame player, and Digger Phelps is up protesting the call. We have a split crew here, Al, which is unusual. Two uh, Mid-American and one ACC. Down low to Kubek. He can't get it to work, and Tower rebounds for Notre Dame. Odd man to man in the overplay to passing lanes. Battle for the rebound, and the freshman Book Boyer has it knocked out to him. Irish misfire, and the rebound down to McCaffrey. There'll be a foul call on Notre Dame. Kevin Ellery reached in that time. Notre Dame coming off a tough loss just Thursday night. They were beaten here by Boston College. Irish trailed by 10 in the second half, and came back to tie it only to lose by two. A big problem for Notre Dame has been the turnovers. BC scored 12 points off turnovers, 12 points off offensive rebounds. And Duke's defense forces 21 turnovers a game among the nation's leaders. McCaffrey out to Hurley, who's been shooting the three much better, and strokes one there. Bobby Hurley, a much more confident shooter in his sophomore year. Now Tower, who's improved his outside shot. Gets a roll. And the Irish are on the board, trailing 5-2. to two. At 6 for 11, he's a better outside shooter. He's down low. Here's Leitner. Grant Hill, a 6'8 freshman, on the second try, tips it in. And Duke again goes up by 5 as Elmer Bennett tries to take it the distance, and a whistle stops play. Too much aggressiveness at that, that time by Bobby Hurley. Bobby Hurley gets his first personal foul with 17.07 to play in the first half. Damon Sweet. Coach Phelps wants more defense out of Damon Sweet. He has been a very good shooter. And so has Tower as the Irish are back to it in three. Grand Hill has to get out on Tower. Fell asleep the last two times. There's that 2-3 zone again. Look for McCaffrey around the horn. Around the horn into McCaffrey. Hurley loses the defense and hits the two. So Bobby Hurley off to a fast start with a three and a two, and Duke is up nine to four. Pick 
picked up his dribble too soon at the five count. He tried to call timeout, couldn't get it over. Never pick up your dribble, gang. Early forces the turnover back to Duke. We're back as Greg Kubek gets a shot inside. Duke extends its lead to 11 to 4. And now the Fighting Irish throw the ball away as the Duke pressure keeps the heat on. Mike Krzyzewski said we're not where we were offensively a year ago with those three big scores like Henderson and Abdel Nabi, Ricky, but we're a better defensive team now. They're, they're tough on defense, and uh, that's what they're trying to do now is blow this game open early. Notre Dame is trying to make it a short game by working the clock when they come down. The Duke won't let them get into their half-court offense. Grant Hill with the offensive rebound. Kubek was pushed. I don't think it's doing it right. Duke is trying to punch it into Christian Leitner. They should shoot from the outside. 1 of college basketball's big winners, Coach K of Duke, and he loves the chemistry on his team. He said yesterday at practice, help. Big thing about this ball club if you want a bottom line on it, they don't care who scores as long as Duke scores. Coach K, I usually give a guy one month. I now give Coach K two months. He's Mr. February and Mr. March. Three straight final fours for Duke for the last five years. Leitner can't find the handle. Tower picks it up. And Singleton's back in the game. Hill and Davis are in for the Blue Devils. Singleton got a blow to the head. He was woozy. Just had to sit down a moment. They need him out there. Thomas Hill is in, along with Brian Davis. Ellery puts it up. No bucket. Foul before the shot. Foul before the shot was on Davis. Came around the wrong side of the pit bull. Interesting, Al Kubek, one of the two seniors in Clay Buckley, the other. They don't know what it's like not to go to the Final Four. It's been there every year they've been at Duke. Over the last five years, it's unbelievable. Three straight. Singleton putting moves on. Ball slapped over. Here comes Thomas Hill. He's been a force of late at a three on two break. Hurley with a loose lead down low to Brian Davis. And the ball goes over to Tower. It wasn't there. That was a French pastry move. Another foul inside. Stop play with 15 15 to play. First half. Okay. Davis reached in that time. That's the second personal. Here's the alley oop that, that, that wasn't there. It was a nice pass by Bobby, but he wasn't free going in. Davis didn't have enough room. Come his junior, senior year, Bobby Hurley will pull that up, back it up, and wait for the rest of the team to come down. That's a mature type thing. Hurley, who set a single season assist total for Duke last year, and he's well ahead of that pace this year. Averaging almost eight assists a game. He's got a scoring average of over 12 a game. Down low to Bennett. And the Irish get a back door. Bennett from Tower. Elmer Bennett, who started every game for the Fighting Irish. Averaging 14 a game. Leitner down low. A double up on him as he guns it out to Hurley. Quickly to Thomas Hill and to Brian Davis. Pressing yesterday, we've got to keep Brian Davis off the offensive board. He's as good as anybody will play going to the glass. He might be their best athlete. What he did, he committed to the air too soon. Right here. See, he committed to the air too soon. He didn't realize he was going against a 2-3 zone. He can't drive against the zone. He can drive against man to man. Because there's five people playing the ball when they're playing the zone. Now freshman. Antonio Lang is in the game for the Blue Devils, replacing Davis, who's had some foul trouble early. Damon Sweet, Notre Dame's best shooter. He is a career 57% shooter, and the Irish climb to within three. The Irish have a chance to win if they keep these five guys out there for 40 minutes. They need a lot of scoring from Sweet. They need scoring from Bennett and also the Pittsburgh. Early with a three-point try is in and out. There's a foul call that stops play underneath. It'll go against Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Number 22, Damon. Now Damon Sweet was called for us. That's his first. Now watch the push here underneath. And that's the third foul this half on Notre Dame. Duke is coming off one of its most important wins. Beating Georgia Tech in Atlanta on Wednesday night. 
Thomas Hill missed the whole thing, the left-hander, and Damon Sweet gets the ball. He's allowed an air ball. He was the one that won the game down there on Tuesday night in the Thriller Dome in Atlanta. For 20 points. He's a big point producer coming off the bench. Look at that tough man-to-man -to -man One of Duke's strength is bench scoring. They outscored Georgia Tech, the bench players from Duke, 31 to nothing. Gallery with a big rebound. Up and down, he can tie the game. Put the foul on Greg Kubek that time. Gallery give a nice head and shoulder fake. He's only around six foot five. With the width of his body, you got to figure he's around six seven, six eight. Bigger Phelps said a key for Notre Dame is to try to spread the Duke out and drive. The three point play. Again, as I told you earlier, if these five players can stay on the court for the whole game against Duke, this game will be a wire job. But I think there'll be foul problems and so forth. Once Notre Dame goes to their bench, they go to shallowness. They go to minnows. When Duke goes to their bench, they go out to blue water, deep water, to marlins and muskies. Got those big fish. And they also have the most valuable asset that any team in any sport can have, team speed. Duke can fly, and they've got people coming off the bench that are even faster. McCaffrey out to Kubek to Hurley. That's what they got to do. Go for the three, Don, and stop trying to punch it inside against that zone. Then it's free. But Kubek back quickly to defend, and now Towers strokes along. Oh, three for three. This one off the window. <laughs> you got to call those. Six points for Tower, and Notre Dame down by seven has come back with a run of nine straight points to take the lead. McCaffrey, the sharpshooter, doesn't go. Rebound to Tower, outlet to Singleton. Sweet's got away with a walk that time. He should have put it up. Early always trying to search out an open man as Thomas Hill fires and knocks down a left-hander, ties the game. And another foul call against Notre Dame. A big left-hander. I think he has to be a little careful. They might tee him up. He's working real hard. He needs a win. He lost to Heartbreak Hotel uh, to Boston College. But a big win on Tuesday against Dayton, down at Dayton. So with a timeout on the floor, the game is tied at 13 all. Back at Notre Dame with Al McGuire. This is Tom Crickey. The Irish on a 9 0 roll have come from behind to tie the game 13 all. They did have a two point lead. Leading scorer in the game is Keith Tower, who's hit three shots for Notre Dame and three tries, six points. Bobby Hurley leads Duke with five points. Just before the timeout, uh, referee Jerry Donahue from the ACC came over and said, Dig a, slow down a little bit. Take it easy. Now the fast-rising Thomas Hill. When Hill starts for Duke, they're 0-2, and he averaged five points a game. When Hill comes off the bench, as he did today, Duke is 6-0, and he averages 15 a game. Kubek with a defensive bound goes up to Hurley. Long lead to Hill. Nice Head pass. Back. Great yes. pass by Bobby Hurley. Great pass. Got good court vision. That last timeout was very important. I thought maybe at that time that Coach K would change his style because he didn't knock Notre Dame out. Maybe try to grind them. Now here's the last play. Nice lead pass. Thomas Hill's down low, goes into the backside text the ball can end up with a three-point play if he drills this kill a sophomore from Lancaster Texas said he gives Duke a five-point lead so now Duke goes on a 6-0 run after Notre Dame went on a 9-0 run get the ball into Singleton's hands let him dish off the bend of the sweep backdoor play if Bennett starts going towards Singleton. And the way you usually work a backdoor play, when you're going to go backdoor, you put your hand behind your head. That's a tip to your teammate that you're going to fake coming out and go backdoor. The Duke tight pressure and this man defense never lets up. Oh! Bennett 
Talk about a prayer. No Frick. backboard, no, just pure net. Trick shot. Then Singleton. Kubek just got his second foul. Watch the trajectory of this. He gets hung in the air, no backboard, all net. And a flip at the end for the referee. Singleton is a quiet leader, hard worker, only soft end of the shooting. Singleton with a three-point play brings the Irish back to within two. And he hawks Hurley at the other end as Thomas Hill is out high with the ball. Duke one for six on three-point shots today. Take their time to get a three-point shot. Nicely done by the senior Quebec, searching out late and hitting him down low. Coach Mike is trying to wear down Notre Dame. I think, Gail, Coach Mike feels real good about this Duke team, where it's heading. Yeah, we spoke last night. I like what he said about Christian Leighton. He says Christian Leighton has deep fire inside him. I thought it was nice. Yeah. So, that he's a competitor, but he's not a showboat. Christian Leighton ends up with 10 rebounds and 16 points every game, and you wonder where he got it. Brooks Boyer, freshman. Oh! Did, did Thomas Hill go upstairs that time? Big time athlete. Thomas Hill way over the rim, and now there's a foul call on Notre Dame, and the Irish picking up fouls of plenty down low. Call that one on Singleton. He reaches in there. Right there. Actually, they're going to give it to Sweet, it looks like. Coming back on the down, both defending. Here comes Boyer on the fly. Come out, Towels is three from three from out there. Get the round towels. Duke with that terrific weak side help. But Ellery makes it go, and the Irish are back to within two. Kevin Ellery's now scored five points for Notre Dame. He also has two personal fouls. The Irish are hanging tough. Leitner starting to take charge inside. Long-armed one with four points, two down low field goals. He doesn't look 6'11", but that's what they have him down at. Got a pair of seven feet arms. Push off by Tower. Pushed off his inside arm. Tower is really found and up, upgraded his game since um, Ellis is out. Yeah, since LaFonso, he's had to pick up the scoring a notch, and he worked hard in the offseason to become a shooter, and he's really scoped the outside shot. Notre Dame down by four, as freshman John Ross is ready to come in for the Irish. Early to McCaffrey, who's ready to launch the three when he gets the chance. He's not hit one yet. Patiently working the ball. Hurley with an off-balance shot. Leitner hits it, puts it back up, and will go to the line. The foul call is on Tower. That's a guy Notre Dame Al can't afford to get in foul trouble. His second. Keith Tower. They work the ball around. Bob puts up a nice, solid shot. Try, uh, Christian Leitner tries to tap it in, and there's the foul right there. 17 fouls on Notre Dame. It wasn't your arms, Keith, it was your hips that created the foul. Oh, no, I didn't go. Keith Tower is a 6'11 junior from Pittsburgh. Leitner gets better every year out of Angola, New York, near Buffalo. He was heavily recruited by Notre Dame. His early leanings in college or in high school were to go here. Coach K won him. He improved and has added different shots to his arsenal. He has one now that he takes off from the baseline, cuts across, and he flip hook, but he works at it. Leading, 
Cruz Leon. is keeping their players fresh. First time Palmer came in. Crawford Palmer, Junior. Game of runs after that 9 0 Notre Dame run. Duke is on a 13 5 run to extend its lead to six again. Freshman, freshman Boyer. And it breaks it. They get sweet on a push off. And Coach Phelps is right near that boiling point. And it is a one and one. Now it's one and one for seventh foul. When you get to the tenth foul, it's two shots. Damon Sweet with three. Eight fifty-six to play in the first half. Twenty-four to eighteen. Duke is in the lead. Blue Devils led eleven to four. Notre Dame led thirteen to eleven. Rebound on the offensive end. Grant Hill got away with a walk that time. Great freshman Grant Hill. Blue chipper all the way. Grant Hill was valedictorian of his high school class, a high school All-American, and he played point guard much of the time. I got it. Hey, this Grant Hill, he goes to the moon when he goes up. That's a big 6'8 when you can jump that high. Uh -huh. On his way down, he gives Keith Powell a push. Never wanted to play football, so his dad, Calvin, took him out, showed him a little league game. Calvin Hill now vice president of the Baltimore Orioles. Looks Boyer in and out. And another call on Notre Dame down low. They get John Ross. This was the game plan with Coach Mike. He made one good adjustment, which is a hard adjustment for younger coaches to make. You set a game plan up. He wanted to come out here and knock out the fight in Irish the first eight minutes of the game. They couldn't do it. They're hanging in. Standing about the 10 minutes to go to the half, he says, let's grind them. Let's get them in foul trouble. And that's what's happening now. Singleton and Ellery come back in the game. With 8.29 to go in the first half. Nico Phelps is doing a good job using the limited bench that he has. As I said earlier, if these five fellas on the court now could play for the full game, this would definitely be a photo. Luke will try to keep him running, though. Force oh. Phelps to go to his bench. Rebound to Ellery. Balance scoring for the Blue Devils. Thomas Hill has seven. Bobby Hooky has five. Grant Hill has five. Leitner has four. In a 1 3 1 zone. Trapping the corners. I'd get it around the sweeps if they could. He can shoot from them. He just did. He can shoot from them. There's something about the pit bull. Get you down the blocks and scores. And you put a big man on him, he moves you out and buries you from three point land. And he's now the leading scorer in the game with 10 points, Kevin Ellery. Leitner down low. Hill almost had the offensive board, but the Irish get it and run, but Duke has three people back. Nice pass. Beautiful bounce. Hit pull working hard. Gets a third try at it. <laughs> Keith Towers just pushed away. It looks like we were back in the football team here. Those are two big bodies. Watch this replay down low. After the shot, the shot dances a little bit. Now watch the push it. Now another shot, there's the one bump. Now watch Keith Towers move him out of there. Here you go, Keith, move him out of there. That's it, just elbow him out. McCaffrey says, I don't want any part of him. He's too big. Duke now with 17 fouls. Irish have not been shooting the free throws well. Well, he has to get up off his heels. He stayed in his heels. Get off your heels there. Get up on your toes. Watch that. Watch his feet. Get up on your toes. We'll go in. Let's see if he gets up on his toes. Yeah, he did that time. And he missed off the back rim. Threw up a brick off his toes. And here comes Hurley. <laughs> Duke has been to the NCAA tournament the last seven years. 
final four for the last five years. McCaffrey fires a three. Knocks it down. Duke leads by seven. And get Notre Dame. They've been the NCAA the last six years, Don. Yeah. They're a long shot to go this year, though. Uh, no chance this year, in my opinion. Digger doesn't like me to say that, but uh, they're NIT bound. Robert Palmer called for the foul. He was the guy knocked down, the big guy. Second foul. Keith gets up the air nice with that fake then. Personal. That hurts. You get the personal foul called on you, and it was Crawford who hit the deck. He comes out with 6.59 to play in the first half. Notre Dame averaging 15 turnovers a game. Duke forcing 21 turnovers. Down the stretch. Turnovers could tell the story. Digger Phelps told his team yesterday this game will come down to free throw shooting at the end. Grant Hill loses the ball to Singleton. New guards are back to defend. No numbers. Back it up. Bobby Hurley with the good foul because Singleton had an inside shot. Personal foul call on Hurley is his second. New personal number 11, Bobby Hurley, his second. The you might have to take him out because you don't want him to pick up his third foul in the first half. Normally, you save a ball play after two fouls in the first half. And surprisingly, in the second half, Don, you save a ball player after three fouls. After a ball player gets four fouls, you're better off just letting them play. Is that right? Yeah, because after four fouls, he starts cat and mouse, and he knows that he commits one more. So he's not as effective. That's the way I used to do it. Well, he did it pretty well for a lot of years. Well, I had a lot of good players. I, I had great players, great staff. How about this building to win it? This building was impossible in those days, almost impossible. I used to try to get the crowd on me. Billy Tubbs has had a lot of local home. He gets the crowd on to him. <laughs> Billy. Yeah. He's unbelievable. Yeah. He's, He's a hummer, we call. <laughs> Coach Phelps looking on. Duke in the lead by six. 6.27 to go in the first half. A youthful digger Phelps back in 1971. And then as the years moved on, he went to the Engelberg Humperdinck look. <laughs> and then to the ethereal look with the flower. And finally, with Coach McGuire, where'd you get the jackets? Boy, it looks like a, a, one of a late night patent on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and Digger had a, a polka dot tie to go with his. It looked like uh, professional bookmakers there. <laughs> Kubek reaching in. Greg Kubek gets his third personal foul. Ryan Davis is on the bench with three personal fouls for Duke. Two shots now. That was the tenth team foul of Duke in the half. In the half. Notre Dame only hit three for seven so far. Don't forget the two-shot fouls. You got to make the first one. Last time up here, Keith missed his first one. It's very important to can the first one. He does. Duke has hit only two of eight three-point attempts today. Irish one for two from the three-point line. Coach Mike keeps the troops coming in. Shotgun and the fouls among the nine-man rotation that he has. Notre Dame truly only has a five-man rotation. When they go to the bench, they really are uh, white knuckling. That's hold your breath time, waiting for the regulars to get back in. Duke likes to play in the 90s, get the score up in the 90s. They want to go and... Use their whole bench. Notre Dame will try to shorten the game. Get this press up. Taking time off with the shot clock. 45 second clock. 6.23 to play in the first half. Put pressure on because Bobby Hurley's out. Good move by Digger. Get it up to Tom Hill. Take over the 10 second line. The numbers are right. Keep going. The numbers are right. Keep going. Keep going. Good play. Couldn't finalize. Talk about numbers right. Throw it down. Damon Sweet down low to Bennett. Oh, great, great play by Lang that time. Great defensive play, Don. Tower makes it work. 
and the Irish are back to within three. Hour now has nine points. Ellery has eight for the Irish. The other end, Christian Leitner scores for Duke. He's now scored six all inside. He has a good outside shot, though, Christian Leitner. Duke again holding to a five-point lead. Their biggest lead was seven, 11 to four. Irish have led once. They were up 13-11. Nice spin turn there. I get it over the key. Put it up there, Keith. Nope, nope. He had indecision. He wanted to pass it into sweets that time. He should have shot. That looked like one of mine. Down low to Leitner. Bangs it off glass, and Ellery takes the ball. Now Notre Dame picks up the tempo, but Duke again is back to defend. Sweet. That's his spot. It is off the baseline, and he's at his best. He's shooting 59% from the field this season. 57% career. McCaffrey lets it fly. Every time he hits the three, he gets knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get his hand much. I think I'll nickname him Moose. His hand never gets much. Bobby Hurley getting set to come back in. Oh, nice move. Just drop in. Nice move. Duke keeping the pressure on, running with the ball. Grant Hill. Swing it around to the weak side. to play first half. Duke with its biggest lead an eight-point advantage. Duke seems to try some little leg weary. Antonio Lang tips the ball out of bounds. Today Duke started a senior in Greg Kubek, but a lot of the year they started two freshmen in Antonio Lang and Grant Hill. Two sophomores and Hurley and McCaffrey and a junior Christian Lacey. They've got some tremendous size coming in next year with Meeks from San Diego with Cherokee Parks, a couple 6'11s. The beat shippers, the beat goes on. Those Coach K stays at Duke. He'll be in the hunt every year. You don't anticipate him leaving? No, no, no. The Boston Celtics tried to get him. He doesn't want to get him. 82 games. Damon Sweet, high arcing shot. McCaffrey does an excellent job tipping the ball away from a bigger player. And now he goes to the QB. Bobby Hurley who checks the bench, calls the play. Damon Sweet not shooting well today. At least one for five. The reason he went for the interview, him and Dave Cavett are good friends. Dave Cavett is the new president of the Celtics. Fisher running down low. Digger wants a walking call. Duke extends its lead to 10. Christian Leitner with eight points, all inside. His second steal of the game. Christian Leitner with 39 steals for the season. Down low, it goes to Crawford Palmer. And he gets two, and all of a sudden, Duke has put the heat on and kicked the numbers up. That's 37-25. Must score this time, Dan. Must. There's three minutes left to get the game given away. Duke scored the last nine points. One thing they had to stop, as I said from the top of the show, you must stop Duke's runs. They get spurts. This is Notre Dame's fourth game in the last eight days. Early content to let the defense set and go with an offensive call. Bobby Hurley, a 6-1 sophomore from Jersey City, New Jersey. Coached by his father, Bob Hurley Sr. St. Anthony's High School, uh, fast becoming a basketball legend in the East. Well, they are a legend. This senior year, Bobby Hurley's team was 32-0 and and national champions, according to USA Today. Problem with the shot clock now. They come out of the famed White Eagle Hall, Jersey City. When you first walk into it, they get the white gym bingo? <laughs> That's right. A reminder, at the end of today's broadcast, we'll be selecting the Reebok Most Valuable Player of the Game. You know, surprisingly, Notre Dame staying in this game. The Texas Express, Sweet and Bennett, are two for 12. Sweet is one for seven, and Bennett's one for five. That's, that's unbelievable. And remember, they've been outscored nine to nothing on this run by the Blue Devils. Curly will not penetrate because he doesn't want to pick up the third foul. Neither team shooting the threes well. Duke is three for nine. 
three-point line. Here's McCaffrey pulling up off balance, but he knocks it down. His brother is a terrific wide receiver from Stanford, an All-American pass catcher who has really moved up in the opinion of pro scouts in the postseason games, Ed McCaffrey. Well, they beat Notre Dame this year. He caught 11 passes in that game. It was a big upset when Stanford knocked out Notre Dame from the undefeated. He catches 11 against Notre Dame every year. Really. <laughs> At halftime, you'll be looking at the Rocket, the man who will probably lead off the NFL draft. He ran today at Notre Dame for the Notre Dame track team. And if you think the Rocket is fast, stay tuned. He is. He's bigger and stronger and faster than he's ever been. He gets out of the blocks like this. Quick, quick reaction, lightning reaction. Our NBC cameras were at nearby Loft to Center to catch that in a major invitational track meet. Team small over the country here. And the rocket ran on the 55 meters. His brother, the missile, Hadri, who runs for Syracuse and also plays wide receiver for the Orangemen, he ran on the 55 meter hurdle. The mom was here. The bomb was not here. That's their younger brother, Suleiman. Rocket, the missile, and the bomb. And you'll see the rocket run at halftime. Just two bombs were put up in the foul line there. That's right. Power one for five from the line. Thomas Hill strokes a long distance three, and all of a sudden the Blue Devils have taken command, opening up a 42-25 lead. Thomas Hill off the bench to score 10 first half points. Tomorrow it's a double dose of the NBA on NBC. First Kevin Johnson and the Phoenix Suns go against Bill Lane Beer and the Pistons. Then there's Magic and Michael when Jordan and the Chicago Bulls go against Magic Johnson and the Lakers who've won their last 14 games. It all begins tomorrow with the NBA on NBC at 12.30 Eastern time. Don't be surprised, Don, if the Phoenix Suns win everything this year. You're a big believer now. Yes. They're, they're a solid ball club to play together. Very little, if any, dissension, jealousy. Always well coached by Cotton Fitzsimmons. Gets the job done. He's been here a long time. And if there's anybody around quicker than Kevin Johnson at point, we haven't seen him. Duke on a 14-0 run in the last five minutes. About to extend that now as Leitner goes down low. And the Blue Devils with 40 seconds to play in the first half to open up a 19-point lead. Leitner scored 10. You can't do it without Bennett and Sweet being in there. you got to put Bennett and Sweet in, even though they're 2 for 12. you got to put them in. They're your only scoring weapons. This is going to end up being a massacre. This keeps going. Not far off right now as McCaffrey pulls up. McCaffrey was hit again. Him. Every time he gets hit when he shoots it, he makes it. Well, that's the first time his hair got mushed. Got a nickname, as I said earlier. They call him Moose. How much would I give to have that head of hair? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can buy one here and stick it out. No, I don't like drugs. <laughs> Play for the last shot here. Freshman's going to pump. Got it. Gets a three. Five seconds to play. Duke now coming down court. Long lead to Leitner, who fires at the buzzer. And Duke goes to the locker room with an 18 point lead. 46 to 28. They'll be joining Gail Gardner in New York, and you'll see the rocket run here on NBC Sports. As at halftime, it is Duke 46, Notre Dame 28. All right, coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, we will hear from possible number one NFL draft pick, Rocket Ishmael, as he performs in a different arena. And we will check in with troubled USC quarterback Todd Marinovich, who is headed for the NFL. We'll get to that right after these commercial messages. It was close for a while, but Duke in command at halftime, 46 to 28 over Notre Dame. And glad you got a chance to see the rocket run. Don Cricky with Coach Al McGuire. You know, Coach Coach Lou Holt said of the rocket, he didn't realize how fast he was until he saw him playing tennis by himself. <laughs> but how about this first half? You were looking for Duke to pull away, and they did. 
Well, what happened originally, he wanted to blow him out early. It wasn't working. Then he went and ground him out. What Coach Mike is doing now, he's using his nine-man rotation. But Notre Dame got to bring in Bennett and Sweet. Without Bennett and Sweet, there's no chance. I know Bennett and Sweet only hit two out of 12, but they'll do much better the second half. Looking at the first half statistics, free throw shooting was a problem for some of the Fighting Irish. Duke, you see, hit four of six free throws. Notre Dame hit four of 11. McCaffrey started slow, but then got hot. He hit five of nine, a couple of threes. He has 12, as does his teammate Christian Leitner, leading scorers in the game with 24 of Duke's 46. We'll be back with the second half, the Blue Devils and the Fighting Irish after this. College basketball is brought to you by the greatest sports performance shoe in the world, the Reebok Pump. Pump up and air out. And by Crest, the dentist's choice for fighting cavities. Crest with Florestat. Back at the Joyce Center, Notre Dame and Duke warming up. Almost set to start the second half with Duke in the lead, 46 to 28. Got a chance to talk briefly here at the table with Coach Mike Gray, one of the Duke assistants, along with Pete Gaudet and Jay Billis and Tommy Amaker, and asked him what Coach K said at halftime, Al. He said he praised the team for great unselfishness. He said it was one of the most unselfish performances they've had, and he particularly praised Christian Lichtner. Well, what, he, what he's doing also, he's shotgunning the fouls. There's three fouls on Kubek, three on Davis, and three on Palmer. And what he's using again is his nine-man rotation. He's wearing out Notre Dame. Notre Dame has to. I'm looking out there now. They're not going to Bennett and Sweet. Without Bennett and Sweet out there, this would be a 40-point game. See, Duke builds from a lead. Some schools, when they get a lead, then they self-destruct. But the Coach K's system is that they keep improving on their system from a freshman to a senior. Well, you think, Al, that uh, Coach Phelps is just unhappy with these two guys because Bennett has no personal fouls, and Sweet, their leading scorer this season with 16 a game, has just two. I think he's unhappy with their two for 12 shooting, one for seven and one for five. But with good shooters like that, that normally you, means that the next 12 shots they take, they'll probably make eight of them. Yeah. You're not hitting, keep shooting because you're going to get hot. If you are hitting, keep shooting because you are hot. Well, and the other thing, you have no one else to put in. I mean, there's no one on that bench. McCaffrey, he's been hot. McCaffrey was at third three, and the leading point producer in the game is sophomore Bill McCaffrey. He now has 14 points. They gave him a two on that. They said he was on the line. Duke again goes up by 20 points. Good bull almost traveled. Power shoots. Ellery working very hard down low for the fighting Irish who have been getting out rebounded. Ellery takes up a lot of space. We call this type of person a, a sumo wrestler. Down low, he can, uh, he's no more 6'5". He goes up to 6'8", 6'9". Duke got rid of Notre, uh, rebounded Notre Dame, 26 to 22 in the first half. Greg Kubek, who got the start today, just got a personal foul. Constant, hard, man to man, belly button to belly button. Oh. Ken Singleton works in the paint, gets it down. And Duke has an 18-point lead. Finally, Notre Dame has gone from man to man. Coach K, who's a laser coach, he fine surgery. Ball is tipped away, and Boyer is rejected from behind. Here's the lead to Hurley. Watch Grant Hill. Give it back to Kubek. No, he took it all the way himself. Dance around, wouldn't go in. Grant Hill got inside position, couldn't finalize, but will go to the charity stripe for a deuce. Bobby Hurley scored five quick points early in the game, has not scored since. Brooks Boyer getting some counsel from Coach Phelps on the sideline. He's a freshman from Jackson, Michigan. So Grant Hill steps to the line, happy to be free of a face mask he's been wearing. He fractured his nose in practice, missed two games, and wore the face mask for three. And since coming back against Clemson and Georgia Tech, he hit 13 of 17 from the field. But when he broke his nose, it was after they had that blowout. Virginia blew him out, really beat him bad up at Charlottesville. 
They took a bus back, a three and a half hour trip back to Durham. And as soon as they got off the bus, Coach K brought them into practice. Coach calls that his Parish Island workout. <laughs> and this is when this guy got his nose broke in the Parish Island workout. Coach K, by any stretch of the imagination, is no patsy. <laughs> Five points now for Grant Hill. Come on, you 20 point lead for Duke. And Duke staying the man to man. Oh. Nice move by Layton. Big time move. Not only rejects, but takes down the ball. Woo! Definitely couldn't find a handle. Sure, two down low. He looked up to see if he could take the shot before he had a hold of the ball. Young people out there, always follow the ball with your eyes and your hands. That means trying the ball to ball. who's picked up his defense. He came in as a shooter and has improved greatly. You have to play it too. Now Bobby Hurley gets a personal foul. That'll be his third. I would take Bobby Hurley off Singleton and put him on to Boyer and move McCaffrey on to Singleton. Singleton's not going to hurt you offensively. Ah, they did it already. No, they wouldn't do that. No, they wouldn't. Seventeen fifty-five to play in the second half. One four offense here. Fish it off. Boyer fires, gets his own rebound, and banks it in. Blocking out, cuts the lead to eighteen. Oh. Oh. Too much hands and keep towers that time. Howard gets his third personal foul. We talked about Duke going to the NCAA Final Four for the last five years. Over that five-year period, Coach Chesky's teams have averaged over 29 wins a year in the last five seasons. And over the years, Coach Chesky is 21 and 7 in NCAA play. No Patsy from NCAA play. Now and then, as you're rated high, you might catch a cupcake the first game. But after that, it's all uh, trench battle, hand to hand combat, and it's on the road. Oh, neutral. Oh, nice, nice foul shot he has done. Nice release. He does everything right. I think he's upside. He can be one of the great players ever. Isn't he out of Alabama? He's out of uh, Virginia. Yeah, the other great freshman. Oh, right. Antonio Wright. Right. Right. So right. yeah. with the block. Watch Creighton make a late and make a parallel move there. You play defense with your legs and your feet, not with your hands. Irish turn it over, and Duke looks to build on a 21-point lead with 17.04 to go in the game. Grant Hill in Valley the ball. Played at South Lakes High School in Reston, Virginia. Valedictorian of his class. Oh, Grant Hill down low. They're trying to set up Ross. Interesting how you talk about Antonio Lang, another highly regarded freshman. He too was a valedictorian of his class. Mobile, Floor High School. Cozen now comes in. Carl Cozen, who has taken more three-point shots than he has two this year for the Fighting Irish. Who back to Leitner, took an extra step, and the ball turns over to Notre Dame. Obvious for talking about final four appearances, Al. Remember those UCLA teams? They went 12 times to the final four in 13 years and won, I think, 11 championships. Cincinnati went five years in a row. Yeah, they won two championships. They never won a championship without the lot of people think they did. Back there. Baseline rejected by Grant Hill. Bobby Hurley 
Beats down low, a double up on the ball, and McCaffrey to Hurley for the three. Get back out to Hurley. If at first you don't succeed, look at the launch again. Reset. Nice fingertip touch pass that time by Christian Leighton. Hurley had six threes in the game not long ago. He can't get the driving shot, but somehow he gets the rebound and gets it to Grand Hill. Got a fresh clock. That means number 45 seconds. After a fast start, Hurley's gone cold. He's missed his last five shots. Whatever they want, they got it. Unless you put the Sweets and Bennett in there, it's an NC contest. And Coach Mike keeps using that nine-man rotation. McCaffrey leads the Blue Devils with 14. Christian Leitner has 12. Grant Hill, who just scored, now has 10. Ellery puts up a shot. Hits one for the Irish. Louis Carnesecca. Now has 500 career wins at St. John's. In the Red Men beat St. Paul to 165. He'll be around to get 700. Louis <laughs> not leaving. Pope's lived to be awfully old. <laughs> and he's the Pope coach. The fifth went over the 700 mark this year. Of course, the all-time leaders to Barron, Adolf Rupp, with 875. That'll take some doing to catch that. He didn't play as many games in the years either. I think you're allowed 24 or 25 games, and uh, the tournaments were eight teams, so you needed three. Now, if you want to win a tournament, you got to NCAA, you got to win six games. Hank Ibis, second, 767. Is Fog Allen in there any place? Maybe it was it Fog Allen that was second? Mm -hmm. I think it's Hank Iba. I know Ray Myers, fifth, the 724, and Dean will pass in sometime next year. I think Claire B's around in that hunt, too. He just must be in the top five. He was the coach of the Blackbirds, LIU. I remember a guy played for the LIU Blackbirds. He said, we thought we were pretty good. We went up to play the New York Knicks in preseason games in Bear Mountain, New York, and beat him twice. Then we knew we were good. <laughs> That's where we used to train up there. Joe Lapchick. Knicks. Knicks. 1450 to go. Coach Phelps looking on an 8 and 12 season. Notre Dame has not been this far below 500 at the 20 game mark in nine years. Well, the thing that hurt is that they lost the magic at playing at home. You must win at home in basketball. Right now, Duke is winning and winning big. Notre Dame had a cold first half shooting from the field and it's gotten worse. The Irish 25% in the second half. And Duke has picked it up, shooting 57% in the second half on four of seven. In the paint, Duke has 28 points. Notre Dame 16. That means down low. Mark is now in the game for the Blue Devils as Coach Krzyzewski gives everybody some PT playing time. Good day to win a letter as the Blue Devils are up 57 to 35. Clark, I believe, is going to Germany. Might have been asked. Christian asked. Oh, it was the other fellow I was watching yesterday. This guy made some nice moves yesterday. Clark, absolutely. Did. That was the fourth personal foul on Crawford Palmer of Duke. You get a bomb, you get a bomb. Hey, hey, hey. Ben is back in. Got to keep him hot. And now with just four points. His first field goal of the second half. It's Hurley drives, dishes off, and Palmer lays it off glass and goes to the line. Hurley sets the table again for the big Duke frontline player. Duke known for these foul line huddles. They regroup. Producer John 
Ferrazis going to the record book. It was the Baron, 875 win. Second was Iba, 767. And Ed Dibble of Western Kentucky, number three, mm -hmm. on the all time win list. Ed Dibble and his red tab. And to this day, the Hilltoppers. Brooks Boyer drives the baseline of the court, brings the Irish back to within 21. Duke running a paced offense now as Hurley goes down low. Gets him with the ball and his last touch by Duke. Oh, they want, the crowd wants uh, Bobby Hurley to get hit with a tee. He didn't do that on purpose. He flipped the ball and went over uh, the referee's head. Now Notre Dame is back to the team that gives them a chance, but I I doubt this game gets close. Singleton hasn't taken a three-point shot all year. And Notre Dame starting guards, there he is, down low to Damon Sweet. And Sweet finds a way to get it down against a double team defense. Sweet. Four points for Damon Sweet, who's averaging 16 a game. And Texas connection now with eight points. Bennett and Sweet combined. Marty Clark and Crawford Palmer go out of the game. Lubeck comes back in, as does Christian Leitner. Mike is not fooling with the game. Keep moving in fresh troops. Duke 17 and four on the season, and Duke 11 and two outside the conference, the ACC. Bennett strokes, two-point attempt, Ellery, offensive rebound. On the horn, sweep. Power loses Leitner with a fake. Can't get the shot to go, it's tipped back to Elmer Bennett. Irish start again. Sold out building gives him an ovation. That's how bad it is right now, and you get a loose ball. 19-point Duke lead. It's been more than that. Bennett rejected by Leitner. Hurley does a great job saving the ball. Gets it to Brian Davis. Over to Thomas Hill. And he strokes off the baseline. Dad is assistant athletic director at Oklahoma, Thomas Hill. He was a silver medal winner in the Olympic Games. Reset. Back in the game has been the shooting of Keith Towerell. He started out four for four. Yeah, lately he's been ice cold. He's 0 for 5 the last five shots. Dubek rebounds for the Blue Devils. Here comes Hurley searching out the open man. Finds himself the open man. And the rebounds down to Damon Sweet. Look at that. Hurley keeping the ball inside. Good hustle by Bob who stayed with it. Nice ball. Touch pass by Christian Leighton. Thomas Hill now has scored 14 points for Duke. Early has a full tank. He goes as hard as he can go all 40 minutes. He leads Duke in playing time per game. He's a fighter. Bobby Hurley doesn't know how to take the first back <laughs> He's chest to chest. Digger Phelps, as you see, has coached the Irish to six straight tournament appearances, but these are troubled times now in his 20th year. Very, very different. He's had a, he had a lot of injuries this year, and uh, there is big passion, and there is you know, a lot of word around it's a time to, for a change. I think it says he came to Notre Dame as an educator, not as a basketball coach. That was the second part of his job. First, and he thinks he's done the job as an educator. And the last six years, he did take him to the NCAA. I don't think, I think Digger will call the shot. I don't think any way that Notre Dame would ever let Digger go without Digger saying, hey, I want two more years or one more year or, or, or whatever. It'll be his call as Leitner puts it up at the other end. Here's Leighton now. I mean, you talk about the quiet man. He already has his 16 points. He got seven rebounds. He'll end up with more than 10. The guy got three block shots, X amount of steals, a couple of steals. I guarantee he has five or six assists. He's unbelievable. But you look out there, you think he's done nothing. He's 
does the now, coach. God darn it, concentrate on the game. Krzyzewski, uh, number 33, Grant Hill. Way with words here. Duke has seven blocks today of shots. Notre Dame has none. Notre Dame has one Final Four appearance under Phelps in his 20 seasons. That was 13 years ago in 1978. The whole, the whole and it was Duke that beat the Irish in St. Louis. Year after your Marquette team won it. Well, got the fortune to win in Atlanta. Win the ball. 77. But like Coach K with a 21 22 point lead, he wants his ball players to maintain the. The concentration, the spacing, look at the spacing out there. See how far away they are from each other? Now the swing down low, look for pick. Grant will come around. Duke has had eight Final Four teams over the years. One of America's top academic institutions, Notre Dame, an outstanding academic institution either. Corners or cheat. Ryan Davis with his first points. A foul call stops play down low with 9.36 to play in the game, and Duke holding to a 68 to 49 lead. But I, I, after a while, Don, I, you know, academically they're both outstanding. But Duke and Notre Dame ball players are supposed to be. Now, Digger had 54 seniors that played four years at Notre Dame, 54 of them have graduated. But um, I don't know if that's a major accomplishment. <laughs> it, it, you know, because they, they're outstanding academically when they come in. Duke's players graduate. Knight graduates his players. A, a lot of outstanding programs graduate their players. But a lot of those programs don't recruit, Don. They select. Yeah. Number 22, Damon Sweet. Guys. When you go out there hustling to, uh, to recruit, and uh, I'm not, you know, it's the way it should be, but I, um, I, I think that this uh, executive director, Richard Schultz, has really got the NCAA in the, in the right frame of mind. And I think it's going to be one or two more years. I feel down the road that it's going to be the president of the university the commissioner of the conference and the NCAA, that the athletic directors in the universities will not have as much to say. They will run the athletic program only, whether it be the president, the commissioner of the conference, and the NCAA. That's why it's highly unlikely, unlikely there'll be a football playoff because in the last vote of the university presidents taken by the NCAA, they were 90% against the college football playoff. I also believe that Notre Dame should join the conference in basketball because they can't book in January and February because the other teams are in conference. There's no continuity in their spacing of schedule. Here's Notre Dame in the last seven days playing four games. I mean, the pros can't play four games. How can a college team play four games in seven days? Singleton gets it down low. Ellery gets his own rebound and gets it down. The Irish get a bit closer, down by 17. Kevin Ellery now with 16 points to lead Notre Dame. Christian Leitner also has 16 for Duke. Stafford has 14 for the Blue Devils. Bennett pushed off, pushed Thomas Hill out of bounds. Last time Notre Dame was in the Final Four that year, they were beaten by Duke in 78. They had players that are still in the NBA playing, like Lane Beer, Krapuka, and Hanslick. Yeah, Hanslick was out of Wisconsin. They uh, used to play two games down in the Final Four, I think, and they lost in the uh, in the consolation game to Arkansas when they had the triplets. That was um, Moncrief and um, Delph. Delph and uh, who was the uh, Brewer? Ron Brewer. Brewer. Yeah, yep. They were um, outstanding. I always thought that Moncrief was Superman. He had a great 10, 11 year career in the NBA. He just took Still a year off, and now he just came back. He took last year. Play with the Hawks now. Irish have kept their turnover count down. They've turned the ball over 11 times. Duke has 12 turnovers in the game. The Duke is holding to an 18 point lead. 8.25 to play in the game. Thomas Hill to Penn Singleton. Grant Hill loses the handle. Tower picks it up, and he was fouled by Christian Leitner, who gets his first personal foul. Personal foul. 32, Christian Leitner, his first. Again, his 11th season at Duke. There were some rocky times early in his career at Duke. The Devils struggled 
They stayed with him. Smart move, Duke. Well, that was the A.D. Butters. He's, a, he's an excellent athletic director. Tom Butters. What happens here now, they're in the one-on-one, -on -one, so um, the key is to make the first one, obviously. But, you know, when you go and get someone outside of your program, which uh, Mike came in from West Point, that means that the program was down. If your program is doing good, then you usually take an assistant or a, uh, a fellow that graduated or a player from yesteryear. So when you go to the outside to get some person from the outside of your program, you got to allow them three or four years at least. Some Keith Towers numbers. He's up for over his season average. Byron elbows, no call. Steal by John Ross. And it comes inbound to Notre Dame. Boy, Leighton has quicker hands than I thought. If we could catch that. He got the Ross down low and, and got all leather and knocked the ball out of bounds. Eight ten left in the game. Seventeen points. Five second call against the Irish as Duke defends well against the inbounds play, and here's going to be a foul call on McCaffrey. You can't allow you can't allow Bennett to make that turn. Once he makes that turn, he's off to the races. You can hear Coach Mike. Mike's getting into this game more physically now because and vocally because I think he thinks his team is coasting. They're on cruise control. Hear Mike talking in the background? He just yelled out to him, let's get going. Let's look like an NCAA team. Okay, with very deep feelings about the Persian Gulf War, many of his classmates at West Point serving over there, his team wearing American flags on their uniforms, the upper left-hand portion. 8.06 to go, and the Irish cut it down to 15 points and press the ball. We got a diamond one. Early breaks it with a lead pass to Davis. He turns it over to Keith Power. So Duke has lost its tempo, its rhythm, in the slowdown game, which they've been so much in command of for the most part. And the Irish inching back in, down by 15 with a lot of time to play. And a foul call goes against the Blue Devils. On Grand Hill that time down low. To put Ross on the foul line for one and one. Grant Hill gets his first. There's too much hands right there on the freshman. Second on Grant Hill. We'll put the other freshman on the line. He's one of the twins. Notre Dame not shooting well in the early part of the season. They shot 43% three point shot through the first 10 games. They've been down to 30 percent over the last 10 games. That's a big hit by John. All of a sudden, what happens here now? Always remember that sixth man at South Bend. If they get going, this is the land of miracles. You have a 14 point spread, and Notre Dame is on a 14 to five point run over the last two and a half minutes. And it's back to within 13. All of a sudden, the Fighting Arrows, seemingly out of the game, down by 22, have inched their way back in. 48 to play. Duke's lead cut to 13. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. College basketball is brought to you by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local Honda dealer today. By the greatest sports performance shoe in the world, the Reebok Pump. Pump up and air out. By United Airlines. Serving over 200 cities in the U.S. and around the world. Come fly the friendly skies. And by the Prudential. Come to the companies of the Prudential and build your future on the rock. With Al McGuire, this is Don Crickey back at Notre Dame, Indiana. The Joyce Center where the Fighting Irish, as you see, have outscored Duke by 10 over the last 234. Inch their way back into the game. Duke still with a 13-point lead. The key is Bennett and Sweet for Notre Dame. They were two for 12 in the first half. Now Bennett has nine points, three for nine, and Sweets has six points, three for ten. 
McCaffrey looking to fire, but the defense is on him, and Damon Sweet, and a whistle again stops play. I believe that's four on Keith Towers, if that is. They got to keep him in action. Keith Tower is fourth. This is the closest the fighting Irish have been since three minutes to go in the first half. Down by 13. Duke with a 12-2 lead over the years against Notre Dame. The Devils have won the last four in a row, including one in November in the semifinals of the NIT. What a beautiful foul through. You weren't with us at halftime. You missed Rocket Ismail of Notre Dame, their All-American football player, going into the NFL draft. He set a school record at a personal best, running 55 meters and 6.2 seconds. He broke Tim Brown, the L.A. Raiders, and the former Heisman Trophy winner. Broke his school mark. A Metro Invitational track beat. Wow. Blocked by Leitner. Oh, blocked by Leitner. His arm is so long. He's truly one of those condors down there from Argentina. And he's quick. He gets third takeaway today for Leitner, who scored 18 points. 7 of 14 shooting, 4 of 4 from the line. Rebounds, assists, and blocks. Christian Leitner with a full package. Duke holding to a 15-point lead and setting on the clock now. Shot clock down to 15. Coach Mike spreading them out, spreading them out. Look for Christian to drop down low. Go down low after this pick. Hurley in the dish off. And Hill. Bobby Hurley penetrates. Started at the other end with a Leitner block. He started down the far end of the court. Came across and over the defensive man. Blocked the ball. And ended up with two points down the other end. And pushed it up to a 17 points break. Hurley now with seven assists in the game. Bennett strokes one off the dribble. Tough shot. Elmer Bennett uses his quickness to up his point production to 11. Don Bennett shoots better in traffic than he does in standing free. Same way McCaffrey from Duke. He shoots better in traffic. He was missing open shots early. They started knocking him down. He was hitting him. He started bumping him. He struck everything. 5.50 to go. 73.58. Notre Dame looking to inch back if they can, but Duke giving them nothing to shoot at. Can the clock down? Mike doesn't throw any party. Let me love the clock a little bit each time down now. They're in foul trouble. Let them put us on the foul line. We'll take it down. On the, it's down to six now, so you got to put it up. Nice jump stop by Christian Leonard. That's late at that time. This guy's going to be a lottery pick, but not this year. He's going to stay for his senior year, Coach Krzyzewski said yesterday. NBA lottery pick down the line. No, I don't think there's any doubt about that. The lottery is the first 11 players that are picked. A lottery pick is a team that does not go to the NBA playoffs. So there's 11 each year that don't go. That's where you get the word lottery and the 11 picks. Tower gets free on the inbound play. As the Irish are back to within 15. Keith Tower has 12. Leighton leading Duke with 20 points. McCaffrey has 14. Thomas Hill. Walker. on the travel. Yeah, that was Walker, Mike. Van Hill scored 12. Notre Dame pitting scores Kevin Ellery with 16. Keith Tower has 12. Elmer Bennett now has 11. Two in the first half. Over count up to 16. The Blue Devils have turned it over 16 times. He's going to go up with it. No, I'm surprised he didn't. No oh. Get a hold call on Duke. Grant Hill, the freshman, had too much hands in there. Gave him a nice fake. Got back on his heels. He had a reach in the third foul. Van Hill gets his third personal foul. Duke bench scoring always a factor when they play. Duke outscoring Georgia Tech's bench 31 to nothing in that win Wednesday night in Atlanta. 
mentioned earlier, Coach K said this is a team that doesn't care who scores as long as Duke scores. Well, it's over 75 75, and Hill missed the foul shot, and Kubek picked it up, passed it on to Hurley, and Hurley hit Tommy Hill underneath and scored the deuce and won a big game at the Thrill Dome. It was a great ball game. Dame got a little pressure up court here. Good call by Diggins. Duke bench today has outscored Notre Dame 22 to 9. Now there's a violation called on the Blue Devils. And Notre Dame, down by 13, gets back possession of the ball. Offensively, they're moving Ellery. Try to get the ball down low to him. They took out Ross, the freshman. Freshman Ross is playing a nice ball game. Solid ball game. Duke had a 18 point halftime lead extended it to 22 in the second half. Now Notre Dame's back to within 13. Dukes extend this defense. They don't want to give him a three pointer. Ellery fires. Leitner rebounds and Hurley leads the way back down court. This now is where, this is where they want the ball on. Bobby Hurley's hands. Give it back to him. And the month the clock down under the three minute mark. Under the four minute mark. Notre Dame only 11 turnovers today. Well below their season average of turning it over 16 times. Shot clock's down to 18. We'll take it on the 10. Early run single into a pick. Leitner doubled up, shoots over it. Rebound to Singleton. Didn't have to leave his feet. Lead to Damon Sweet. Out on Christian Leitner. With 332 to play. Sweet as good. He's quick. He's fast. Watch, watch how quick he moves. Christian tries to catch from the backside. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad call. The ref is in a tough position. He was on the other side of the court to be able to see him on that one, but he couldn't help it. He's a trail official, and all of a sudden they put a fast break going down the other way. The ref that made that call is a good referee. His name is Roger Paramore. Been around a long time. Mid American official. Coach K just yelled out he wants a timeout, Al, if they hit them both. Irish back to within 12. Damon Sweet, seven points for the day. This could turn Digger's season if he could ever come out of here with a W. Which is a long shot. Well, it's possible. Uh, Duke is starting to tighten up a little bit. They have to work the clock more. Hard to believe it was 20 years ago that UCLA came in here and saw its 88 game streak end. 332 to go in the game. Duke, its lead, once 22 points in the second half, cut to 11. Blue Devils win down the ball, but Al Duke has come out of their offense with the big lead sitting on the clock, running the game clock down. Well, it's really the thing to do. You don't fool the victory. They're trying to get a victory without um, being a hog about it right now. We'll spread them out, look for Notre Dame to foul them. Notre Dame has taken 14 more shots than Duke the second half. Grant Hill in and out with the ball. Notre Dame still with time to get back in it even closer. There's still three minutes and five. Another seven ticks in the clock and they start looking for the shot. They try to get it down low to Christian Leighton or to Grant Hill. Game clock down to five. Leighton's got a launch. Missed it all. Now feels the ball inside court. Iris can get it down to single digits now. 40 to play. Sweets and Bennett. Either one of them. Put it up. He can hit from there. Rebound down to Bobby Hurley. Shortest player on the floor. Gets the rebound and draws the foul. John Ross came over the back. So Hurley got low and blocked out and got the bound. And he'll go to the line. A lot of times, uh, guys and girls out there, when you're trapped, sometimes you're better off taking the 10 count and losing the ball and letting your defense set up properly than trying to throw a Hail Mary pass out there, have it turned over, and give the opponent a chippy layup. 
And also, as the clock starts ticking down when you hold the ball like that, a good thing is to slap your own arm. Because a lot of times, the referees blow their whistle off the sound of flesh on flesh. That was the ninth team foul on Notre Dame this half. Duke has 11 team fouls. Digger was saying yesterday, Al, it's going to come down to free throw shooting the last few minutes of the game. Duke hits the free throws, early knocking them down. Early now with his first point since early game. He scored five points very early in the game. Now he has seven for the day. The only thing you can come down to is that the five is out there now playing the whole 40 minutes. When they go to the bench, it's two defenses, NC, no contact. Got to keep pressure up there. You got to stop the clock with the sub on the side to uh, Notre Dame. Elmer Bennett now at the 11 second half points. He had just two in the first half. Got a call timeout. Whoop. Good call. He was bumped that time. Good call. Beautiful. Can't move after, uh, they can't move. He moved laterally, then he's not allowed to. You can after a made shot. Yes. That's right. So it's a violation. Duke turns it over. Two minutes and three seconds left to play. If Duke scores, I mean, if Notre Dame scores here, I would look for Mike to call a timeout, settle him in and say, hey, let's eat the clock and get out of here with a win and fly home. Duke leaving right after the game on the charter. Duke has turned the ball over 18 times in this game. Our fire, Grant Hill, Thomas Hill with the rebound. And it comes in, it'll be a foul call. Notre Dame hacked on the arm of Thomas Hill, so the left-hander will go to the free throw line. And someone's going to go to the bench, I believe. That might have been Keith Cowley's fifth foul, so that's all she wrote. Hey, you're taking a long walk the wrong way, Keith. Right. You've got to turn around and walk back. Uh, they'll probably put a small man in because they want to put pressure up court. And small guys can put pressure on better than the big guys. Yep, he's coming with the freshman boy. Now look for full court pressure if these foul shots are made. The next minute and 55 seconds should take a lifetime to play. Notre Dame with the perimeter shooters in there now, the long distance shooters. They'll have to try to stroke the three. 77-66. Watch the pressure of the foul shots made immediately by Notre Dame. Thomas Hill's point production up to 16 for Duke. Their coaches were saying he came from a smaller town in Texas, Lancaster. He came from a big city. He'd have been everybody's All-American. And... Well, he's consistent and has upgraded his offensive output. Clock doesn't start. Nice play by Singleton. Do you touch the ball? But it's, um, it's over. The game. Bennett <laughs> gets a three. Elmer Bennett with guts, keeping the Irish in the game. They had him on the bench much of the first half. Now they're playing him, and he's firing on down. Hits the three, and the Irish are down to within ten. Don Cricky with Al McGuire, Notre Dame, Indiana, where the Irish have rallied back from a 23-point deficit. They're down by 10. And a foul call on Brooks Boyer, Notre Dame, as the Irish defending full court. The only good thing about it, no ticks off the clock. The bad thing about it, you put an excellent foul shoot on the line. Surprisingly, again, I hate going back to it, but uh, Sweets and Bennett only had four points in the first half. They now have 26 points. And I don't know how many minutes they set out the second half. That was more the only chance of coming out with victory. McCaffrey families turned athletic scholarships, athletic ability into some handsome scholarships. Bill McCaffrey at the line on a full scholarship at Duke, his brother, receiver, full scholarship at Stanford, his sister Monica. Georgetown scholarship basketball player. Always got to remember it's TE, it's tax exempt money. That's what's good about <laughs> it. <laughs> what helped McCaffrey this year, he went and toured Europe with the ACC All Stars. He gave him a lot of money. Ball comes inbound to the Duke Blue, Blue Devils as the Irish substitute going OD. Now they send a defensive player and a better rebounder, take Ellery out. Next 10, John Ross comes in. Thank <laughs> you. 
God bless him, Digger really works. <laughs> he really works. <laughs> we didn't know if he could make it another week after that Virginia game a week ago, and the Cavaliers rallied against the Irish. But you, but you know his game plans are good. He, he does an excellent job with his game plan. But now with the, uh, the guys out, Williams out, and his El, uh, Ellis out, he just don't, doesn't have the firepower. Talked about Dent scoring, Alan Duke has outscored Notre Dame's bench. Duke's bench has put up 24 points in this game. Notre Dame's with nine. Duke has been hitting from the line too here in the second half. Yeah, well, they have 13 for 14. They're always good for them. Uh, they're confident up there. And they always do. Every time you talk about it, you got to go down and came back out. But his moment, his day in the sun was Tuesday night at Georgia Tech. And he won the game. Biggest win of the season for Duke. Duke has lost four games, lost the three thoroughbreds, really four, but the three would be Georgetown, Arkansas, Virginia. And the other game they lost was North Carolina State. Marty Clark comes in the game now. Thomas Hill going out. He scored 18 points. Clark, Leitner to Hurley, and Bobby Hurley is fouled by Tim Singleton. So Hurley goes to the free throw line. Notre Dame personal number 10, Tim Singleton gives fourth. Fourth personal foul on Singleton. Well, you're not going to dig two deep into the most valuable player. I think it's obvious, Don. Christian Leitner. He's had a great day. Leitner with 20 points. He's done it all. Ten rebounds, four blocks, two steals. And today's Reebok MVP is Christian Leitner of Duke University. Reebok and NBC are proud to make a $1,000 donation to the General Scholarship Fund of Duke University to award outstanding academic and athletic achievement and to help those in financial need. 113 to go. 83-69. Duke in the lead and Hurley at the line. Bobby Hurley takes a seat. A nine-point day and a lot of assists. Running the Duke offense. Now it's an NBA doubleheader here on NBC. First game, Phoenix and Detroit, and it's Chicago and the L.A. Lakers. 12.30 begins Eastern time with NBA Showtime. That should have been an intentional foul over there at this time. You've got to be careful so you don't get hurt this late in the game. I believe now both teams are shooting one and one. They're both in the 10th foul, I believe. So it's automatically not one one. It's automatically a two-shot foul. Go to the foul line, take two. I do not like this play because it doesn't make a game shorter. It makes a game longer. And the reason they put it in, they thought it would make a game shorter. McCaffrey, a sharpshooter at the line. Shoots the ball without a lot of rotation. I still like his hair. I, that, that's some head of hair there. He looks good. Next on the West Coast following this game, on the West Coast only will be the Pepsi Softball Challenge on NBC Sports World. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill, coordinating producer of basketball, Tommy Roy. As Notre Dame turns it over, Marty Clark takes it down, loses the handle, finds the handle, and finally the ball is slapped in the backcourt and the Irish come back a running. Our producer today, John Faratsis, our director, Brian Sheriff, as the Irish fire a three, Boyer hits it. Notre Dame comes to within 14 as Boyer has scored 10, 38 seconds to play. McCaffrey went out with eight. I think the Lakers are the team to beat. And they're playing good and they're deep. <laughs> they already think they got the second national championship. And I say to the booking agency, I say, hey, <laughs> they might not win this thing. I don't want to be speaking to the morgue. <laughs> they might win it, too. I oh, yeah, oh, yeah, they, they might win it. And, uh, uh, off paper, they should. But Arizona, Arkansas, Ohio State, North Carolina, Duke, Port Jester always has a smile. It always um, keeps it light. Very unselfish group. Rebound comes down. Here comes Elmer Bennett. He'll look to launch the three. 
Gets it out to Ellery who fires. Didn't go, but there's a foul on the play. And he will take three shots. That's the new rule. Scored 20 for Duke. McCaffrey 18. Thomas Hill 18. Grant Hill had 12. Now the Irish make a substitution. 18 seconds to play. Notre Dame with a 14-point lead. The Irish will be quick to foul. Up court to Marty Clark. Lead goes to Brian Davis. Wham! And Brian looks over at Coach K. You can Coach K was pleased with that or not. Thanks to our statistician, Galen Fricky, to Kevin Gilfoyle and John Bolger. As Bennett, who's been terrific, hits the long jumper. A 19-point day for Bennett, but the time runs out, and the Fighting Irish fall to Duke. Duke extending its overall record against Notre Dame to 13-2 with a 90-77 victory. Now for Coach Al McGuire, this is Don Cricky. Glad you could be with us at Notre Dame, Indiana. The preceding has been a presentation of NB.